So I've been watching this humanoid robotic space for a while. It fascinates me. I have a passion for this kind of technology, how AI integrates into these humanoids and really thinking through the effects they're gonna have on our society. So in the past few weeks, two different new humanoids have launched. First was the figure three humanoid. And then Neo just launched uh, just recently. My name is Bernd, and today we're launching Neo, our humanoid for the home. On the surface, they both look pretty similar. They've both moved towards these soft clothed exteriors, which are soft to touch, feel safe in our homes. That's the way the sort of in-home robotics seems to be going. But if you scratch the surface a little bit deeper, it turns out there's a bit of a difference, at least initially. If you watch the Neo launch video, you'll see that only a couple of their clips were sort of noted as fully autonomous, which means most of those clips were tele-operated. And in a couple of follow-up videos others have done, they've really showed how much this company is relying on teleoperation. What does that mean? It means that someone with a VR headset and hand controllers is in a different room controlling that Neo humanoid. Now, this is, seems to be quite different to the figure robotics, the figure three robot who Brett Adcock, the CEO, has uh, publicly announced that everything you see uh, in that initial launch video was running fully autonomously on their Helix AI, their inbuilt AI system. Now the company behind the Neo robot has said that by the time they launch, so they've opened up their website now, you can put in pre-orders for delivery sometime next year. They will be largely autonomous, but they will have this expert mode in which uh, someone from the company can take control from far away of the robot, looking through its eyes and moving its arms and legs to help it out if it gets stuck or to t help teach it new skills, new abilities, which is an interesting model, business model, and it sort of brings up a few issues of privacy. You know, I guess they're gonna have ways to geofence the humanoid from different, you know, from the bedroom, for example, or the bathrooms when people are in there, but it does sort of bring up this sort of funny spidey sense that you could have um, one of these people, one of these controllers, sort of jumping into the embodied, embodying the robot at possibly any time. So their uh, CEO said, you need to be comfortable with this idea of this of these humans possibly taking control and sort of beaming in to your house uh, when needed. So this has become a bit of a trend in technology products where you make this beautiful flashy video which shows the sort of, gives you this flavor, this taste of what the product's gonna be before the product is actually there. And that's what we've seen with Neo that the makers have shown this amazing video with all this potential. And it is really nice to see. You have these moments when the, the robot looks like a human in a sort of robot onesie, a robot jumpsuit, uh, doing things throughout the house. And so it gives that, that sort of magical impression of this, you know, this helper that's gonna do your daily chores in your house every day while you're asleep, while you're out, right? The promise is amazing. So why are tech companies doing this? I think because they want first mover advantage. They want to give people a flavor of this sort of magical experience. And there's something interesting from a psychological point of view from that. We know that when people get that sensation, that emotional reaction to a potential product, even though it's not ready yet or not actually real today, that magic feeling, that sensation sticks. And this is something we understand a little bit about in psychology. It's called the continued influence effect. Once you build that sort of mental model of the product, the brand, it sticks even after you see videos like this saying that, you know, what you saw in that, that release was not real as of today. So the magic sensation around it becomes glued onto that product, that brand, and you have a better emotional response to it. So that's kind of the reason I think that people are doing this. 
they're releasing these videos and promises of these amazing spectacular capabilities even if they're not real today so another interesting aspect when it comes to these humanoids and the ai systems embedded in them learning from everything in our houses so most of the ai systems the large language models we're used to interacting with you know, gpt's your claudes have scraped the internet for most of the data available and books and all the other things and there's all that ip issues attached with that and the next frontier of almost infinite data sources is the home the workplace factories you know working in nursing homes in hospitals all these kinds of places and all the sort of different variables of how to grab things how to interact with people and that is tremendously rich uh, data source for learning so i guess following along the lines of the tesla model they released teslas with the promise <clears throat> of full self-driving mode they didn't have it uh, initially we're seeing a similar thing here where the robotics companies want to train their models train their robots from being in the house so they're relying a little bit if you like on these early adopters these people at the sort of far left of these innovation adoption curves that you know are keen to to try new things so we will have to rely on these early adopters to get the initial training uh, up to speed that means that for those early adopters they probably won't have fully autonomous robots at least for the neo um, again the figure three we haven't seen the full release specs of it as i said the uh brett adcock the ceo has said that they are running fully autonomously which does feel different to the neo robot and a little bit more advanced in terms of ai capabilities perhaps so it's going to be interesting to see how this unfolds if these initial models are going to make mistakes in our house they're going to break things so this is all very exciting but what does it mean for us the way we live our quality of life and of course the big question jobs how is this going to influence the job economy so in terms of the effects of ai on jobs initially we thought ai was going to take all the so-called blue collar jobs first in factories and that started to happen a little bit then the generative AI boom came and we saw that AI was actually affecting all the kinds of cognitive work that could be digitized and run sort of remotely. That was sort of the first mistake and we're, have, we're seeing already the huge impact of sort of outsourced intelligence taking jobs already from, you know, the effects in media, Hollywood to uh, law, to coding, to accountants. But what is this release of these fully dexterous physical embodied ais that are coming to our homes well it means that the dexterous jobs that are currently kind of safe won't be safe for that much longer so these robots probably are coming for our jobs our physically dexterous jobs yes it's not going to happen tomorrow but it will happen over time we will get to the point where these robots will be able to drive existing cars sit in them drive them they'll be able to come to your house uh, fix your plumbing, your electrical. They'll be able to do these physical jobs out in the garden, um, things that humans currently do. So the moat of the physically dexterous jobs, you know, that were protected from AI is rapidly shrinking. And I've been talking a lot about this to companies all over the place, all kinds of companies, governments, tech companies, creative companies, and everyone's feeling the pinch. Everyone's feeling this slight anxiety due to the uncertainty in the environment at the moment about the future of work, the future of jobs. And these, the launch of these new humanoids are really just going to start cranking that up more and more. So yes, they probably will start taking our dexterous jobs at some point. And it's important to note here that it's not just about the economic value of jobs. It's not just about the paycheck. Even people who say they don't like their jobs get purpose and drive from their jobs. And we know that purpose is one of the most fundamentally important things to humans. If we lack purpose in our lives, we're more likely to die from all different causes by about 140%. So it's not just a mental health thing, it's a full biological health uh, issue. So as we move forward through this AI and now humanoid robotics revolution and disruption, we have to find ways of maintaining that purpose and competition and a few other human characteristics that are core and center to being human. And currently all the UBI plans that I hear people talking about really just focus on the finances of this. They haven't proposed ways of 
helping people uh, maintain this purpose and drive this meaning in their lives. And we're going to have to really focus and double down on how to solve these problems because they are probably as or more important than the financial parts of the UBI plans. So I'm really curious, everyone, what do you think when you watch these videos, have a look at Neo or have a look at figure three. How does it make you feel? Do you have an emotional response? Do you get a little bit of a strange, weird, strange vibe? A bit of that, what they call uncanny valley, something that looks almost human and behaves humany, but not quite enough. So you get this icky kind of vibe from it. Does it make you feel scared? Let me know in the comments. Um, I'm fascinated by this. Um, just take a moment to watch, see how they move and walk um, and sort of clock your emotional reaction to that. Also, I know you haven't tried them, but do you feel like you could trust a humanoid to go and get your medication, to make you a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, to leave them alone with your children? Do you feel there's enough trust there yet? What would it take, do you think, to build that trust? Would you have to see thousands or millions of people using these humanoids and see the proof in the pudding that we can trust them? So there's another issue of trust here. Will we trust our lives, our family members, young and old with these humanoids? And it's going to be fascinating to see how these tech companies uh, approach this trust issue. There are a lot of psychological dimensions to that, and I really hope they get it right. So yes, it's an exciting time. I love tech. I love AI, but I'm also cautious. I'm also concerned about the psychological impacts of these beings <clears throat> coming into our lives. I'm also worried about the impact on humanity as we see the number of human jobs declining as they will over the next decade or so. So let me know in the comments again what you're thinking, what you're feeling, and your thoughts about how to navigate all this change over the next few years.